Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the M240 Bravo Light Machine Gun. This machine gun actually does higher damage per second than any other machine gun available to the support class. It holds 100 rounds in a box mag, each of which do 34 damage. Now you'll actually go through these 100 rounds a little bit faster than you might expect. The reload time is an almost certain death 6.2 seconds long, so if you're going to reload this gun, I suggest you find a corner to hide in, otherwise don't expect to live or just switch to your sidearm and go out in a blaze of glory. Who knows, maybe you'll get an extra 4 or 5 kills with your sidearm. Anything can really happen with the support setup, it's a lot of fun, it gives you a lot of options, and for taking on multiple opponents, it's really just great, not having to worry about that reload until you go for you through your first 100 rounds. As you can see here, the iron sights aren't too shabby, but I would highly recommend upgrading to any other sight than the basic iron sights. You know, they just take up a lot of the screen next to you. They look cool uh, just running with traditional iron sights, but you're gonna get better use out of a red dot sight. I wouldn't recommend going anything higher magnification though than the traditional one times red dot sight. The gun has a fairly low rate of fire at 650 rounds per minute, so you definitely can't spray and pray quite as effectively with this weapon. But again, it does have the highest DPS available because it's shooting 34 damage maximum instead of the traditional 25. Now all the machine guns out there do 25 maximum damage except for the PKP and the 240 Bravo. Now that 34 is really a magic number because it's a 3 shot kill at anybody who's 8 meters or closer. Now what's great about the damage drop off for this weapon is that it never goes below 25. So you're going to get a 4 shot kill on anybody unless you manage to shoot them in the leg too many times and you don't get the proper damage multiplier but at long distance shooting this gun should still be very very effective so that's one of the great things about this weapon is you can really take shots at long range and all of a sudden you hit a guy two or three times and he's down and you're like what happened oh I'm doing 25 damage maximum still so one headshot and two body shots will take somebody down at long range and it's kind of nice when that happens I will say that this gun is very hard to use before you get any of the cool attachments for it it's got some of the highest side to side recoil out there and the bullet bloom increases pretty quickly with this weapon so your accuracy goes downhill very fast. Burst fire is definitely recommended for anybody at medium range with this weapon and as soon as you possibly can I would say get the compensator and throw that on there to reduce that side to side recoil and then the stubby grip is also a great uh, addition to this weapon to help you maintain some of your accuracy. One thing that I absolutely love about the new 240 Bravo versus the one from Battlefield 3 is that we now have much better starting out aiming down sight accuracy. And this is something that I always had issues with in Battlefield 3 because uh, the 240 40 Bravo has a very long barrel. It's in fact actually an accurate weapon in real life and the fact that they gave us such bad accuracy in BF3 just really hurt the gun in so many situations. So now we're starting off with a .3 aiming down sight accuracy. The only other weapons in the game that actually beat out this uh, in terms of fully automatic accuracy are assault rifles. One area that Battlefield has always given the machine guns is a little bit of leeway in the agility that you have when you have uh, a huge honking machine gun. The 240 Bravo is a huge weapon. It is possible to fire it standing up or in a kneeling position. Uh, you're definitely going to get the best accuracy out of it with the bipods out in a prone position, but in terms of running around quickly, uh, bringing the weapon up to sights extremely fast, vaulting over objects with a 240 Bravo, I feel that there's very few people in real life that could actually handle this weapon with the dexterity that uh, you do in Battlefield. That being said, it certainly is fun to bend the rules of combat a little bit for a video game and uh, because this gun is so huge as I was saying before you actually have to be careful when you're peeking around a corner this weapon is visible very easily so you might think you're fully concealed but the gun could be peeking around around a corner and your targets will definitely notice your position based on that of course the muzzle flash is huge so once you start firing uh, your position is going to be given away just from the fire of the weapon unless you're using a suppressor or a flash hider I love how the reload animation of this weapon requires requires you to flip up the top hatch on the gun and it actually keeps your two times sight on there and whatever sight you have mounted on there and flips that up with it as well. It's just kind of cool attention to detail with some of the weapon animations that DICE has put into the game. Now it's hard to overlook the fact that the 240 Bravo used to have 200 rounds in Battlefield 3 which certainly gave it a lot more stopping power and a lot more time in between needing to actually reload this weapon. Now if you get through all 100 rounds of this gun then you're probably doing alright in Battlefield 4. 
However, it does kind of feel like sometimes you're reloading a little bit too frequently and the fact that it's got a six second long reload certainly doesn't help. When you compare it directly with some of the other light machine guns, some of the best light machine guns like the MG4, which does have 200 rounds, uh, that gun's very effective, but it does lose a bit of its power at distance because uh, the damage drop off with that weapon isn't as good. Also, its um, accuracy because of its higher rate of fire tends to suffer a bit more at extreme long ranges. So the major difference between between this weapon and some of the higher rate of fire machine guns is that it's more effective at long range in my opinion. Uh, its accuracy holds up pretty well at range, its damage drop off is great at range. Um, it actually, because it does the highest damage per second, you might think that it would be one of the best close quarter machine guns out there, but I would favor a higher rate of fire that's only slightly less DPS for close quarter combat just because it's more forgiving. If you miss a shot or two with the 240 Bravo in close quarter combat, then you're probably going to lose that firefight, whereas if you've got something like the MG4, you can definitely miss a few shots and absolutely come back and win that firefight. Something that you absolutely need to be careful of is when you start firing from the hip and then you aim down sights, you will maintain your hip fire accuracy. It's technically a bug in Battlefield 4 right now, but if you found yourself having fairly inaccurate shots when you start shooting from the hip and then aiming down sights and you notice that your shots are still all over the place, that's because you're still getting your hip fire accuracy. So this can be remedied by if you notice you're getting this, just stop firing and then fire again while still maintaining your aiming down sights and this will basically reset your normal accuracy. Depending on what game mode you're playing with the 240 Bravo, there's a lot of different ways to load this out. In fact, I'm playing Team Deathmatch right now, which would mean that the suppressor could be an excellent attachment for it, not only hiding the flash, but keeping me off of the mini map. Um, and considering that the, uh, the suppressor affects your hip fire accuracy negatively, well, you're not gonna really wanna be hip firing this gun anyway. So it's a pretty darn good attachment to have for this weapon. If you're going for ultimate precision and long range accuracy though, I would definitely recommend the stubby grip and then depending on how good your recoil control is, uh, I would say probably a compensator on top of that. If you can manage the recoil, then a heavy barrel could be fun, but personally, I like that compensator and stubby grip. Uh, if you're playing on something like say a rush game mode where stealth isn't quite as important or say you're around a lot of teammates that are giving away your position anyway, then definitely go for something not involving the suppressor. I mentioned earlier that you really don't need anything with a higher magnification than a one-time sight and yet I've got the two times magnifier on here. That's basically there because there's no reason not to have it and every now and then you might want a little bit more magnification, uh, especially in a rush game mode. If you're having trouble pushing up and you need to absolutely take out targets at longer range, at least knowing that your sights are on can be helpful even if the gun doesn't necessarily have the accuracy to back it up. It will still help out a little bit for long range combat. So that pretty much wraps it up for my review of the 240 Bravo. I think it's one of the best LMGs out there. It serves a different role from the MG4 or the M249, two guns that I really like a lot as well. I would take the MG4 into a close quarter environment like Operation Locker and I would want the 240 Bravo perhaps in a rush game mode or a deathmatch game mode with more long distance engagements. So give the 240B a try and uh, also let me know which weapon you would like me to run with next. You can do so by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.